guys. Welcome back to my channel. I have books to show you. Oi, I have a problem. I really do. I think, you know, I got this under control. I've been doing better. It doesn't last long. All right, so um, here is my book haul for the last month or so. I have three book outlet boxes and then a myriad of other stuff. The other stuff has gone down quite a bit. The book outlet -like boxes have not. I was actually surprised I got the third one in the mail recently. I didn't think I was gonna get it for just a little while still. Let's scoot over a little bit. There we go. All right, so I've been kind of in a romancy mood lately. So I have some romances, I have some YAs, I've got a little mix of everything. So um, I will go ahead and just start showing you. So, um, <laughs> One of my favorite authors is Katie McAllister. I have not read a book from her in ages. All of my smutty romances are in storage because I just have not been in that mood lately. And um, that changed after I finished my Sarah J Mass books because I cannot seem to get into fantasy. And fantasy is my favorite genre, but I just can't seem to get there. So I've been doing romances instead. And this is kind of a combo. It's like a romance and a fantasy one. They're a little smutty, but I don't mind. I like them that way. I also have three more mass market paperbacks that I bought. This one I've already read. This is The Best of My Love. It's a Susan Mallory book. It is the last book in the Fool's Gold, I don't know what you call it, series, I guess is what you would call a 20 book series. I didn't realize it was the last one when I bought it. But it's really cute and then of course I went on thrift books and ordered some of the first ones in the series so you'll see that in my next haul because they're not here yet but I thought it was really cute and I used to love Susan Mallory and so I thought it'd be fun to like to read some of her again and then to go because of those that book liking I bought these two these are the spin-off series from um, the Fool's Fold this is it's called Happily Ink and I don't remember which one's which. This one is um, You Say It First, and this one is Why Not Tonight, and they are the first and the third in the series. I think this is the first one, but I'm not sure. And this follows the brothers of the main character from this one. So I thought it'd be fun to read them. I just haven't started them yet because I just bought them the other day. So I still have a receipt in them, and I bought them full price because I was just in that mood and now I'm waiting for all the stuff to come in that was cheap. Cause I'm cheap. I'm book cheap. All right, and then my dear friend, Renee, sent me a couple of books. She sent me The Ark for Always, Forever Maybe, and the finished edition of A Curse of Ash and Ember, which I have not read either of, and I'm not even sure what they're about. Um, I just got them in the mail recently, and I keep meaning to go look and figure out what the books are about, but I haven't done it yet. Sorry, Renee. I will definitely do it soon, though, because I'm curious, and I'm currently not reading any books, so we have to fix that. All right, so I am kind of low-key obsessed with Saba Tahir on um, Instagram. I love watching all of her stuff. I love watching her talk about vegetables and her stuffed animal stuff. So I went out and bought one of her books because I was really curious. I wanted to see if I like her writing as much as I like her personality. Again, I bought it. I had every intention of starting it right away and I haven't done it yet. This is my problem, is that I get excited and then I go buy a book and then I'm like, oh, I have to finish this one first before I can start that one and then I don't start it right away. Like I said, I'm currently not reading a book. So I finished my last book last night and I have to figure out what to read next. So something off this pile just might make it in. And then I have the last Magnus Chase book. This is the Gods of Asgard. This is number three. I still need to read this one too. Um, I've been making my way through them, but my daughter told me that she wants me to wait for her to finish the series, and she hasn't been with me much because she's been at school so often that we haven't had a chance to read it together. So, but I thought I have a copy of it, which I'm very happy about because it's 
kind of hard to read a book without a copy of the book. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's not easy. All right, um, the next book I got was Blanca and Roja. Um, this is Emily McLemore's new-ish book. And I love Emery McMore, at least the book that I read of hers. I have all of her books right now, but I've only read one so far. So I still have three more to go. And this one is a um, Romeo and Juliet retelling. So I was like, yeah, this piece. So I think it's Romeo and Juliet. No, it's Swan Lake. I don't know why I thought Romeo and Juliet, the weighted feathers was Romeo and Juliet. This is Swan Lake, which I don't know much about Swan Lake. So I'm curious about that one. All right. And then, um, me and Renee, I mentioned a minute ago, are gonna do a buddy read for these two books. And she lives in Australia and doesn't have the ability to buy this book in hardcover, so I bought two of them and I'm sending one to her. And so now I have the full first two books of this series. I don't I think there's three books in it, I don't know. I know it started off as one and then they added another one. And now I don't know where else it's gonna go. But I have the pretty covers. I have quite a few, um, the Victoria Schwab books and I've never read any of them. So it's time to fix that. And buddy reads are always my favorite random way to read books. All right, last but not least, my bookstore had a sale where you can um, spend five bucks on like certain books. They do it a couple of times a year. You'll walk in and they'll have a table of $5 books. So I walked in, they had a table of $5 books. So I got The Fate Divide. Um, I've heard bad things about Carve the Mark, but it was $5. I already have Carve the Mark and I have a friend who wants to read it with me. So I thought that it might be kind of a good idea to buy it while it was cheap, just in case. All right, it's getting kind of dark because the clouds are covering the sun. So hold on. There, it's a little better. Not a lot better, just a little better. And I also bought number five and number six. Uh, the Fallen Kingdom series. This one is uh, Crystal Storm and this one is Immortal Rain. Again, they were $5. They're a little bit bigger than my normal books because these are Guam paperbacks. These are um, the European sized books. You can hear my son behind me. I'm sorry. Last time I said that, I listened and I didn't hear him. For the most part, I did hear him once, but nothing big. Um, so hopefully you guys won't be able to hear him, but he's in the room behind me trying to be quiet. All right, now for the book out like boxes. Um, the big fat one is full of cookbooks and Alice in Wonderlands. The rest of these, I don't remember. One of them I've had for a while. Basically I filmed my last book haul and then it came the next day. So I've had it for like a month. And then this other one showed up yesterday and then the big fat box came in between but the big fat box like i said is full of cookbooks and alice in wonderlands so i wasn't too too worried about it this one oh i think this is the newest one i bought all right so i've been really curious i've been really really curious about the outlander series I've heard good things about it. I've heard bad things about it. They made a TV series off of it and I was curious. So I bought number one and number two because they had the big fat paperbacks and not the mass market paperbacks. And all I can find on Island is mass market paperbacks. So I'm doing this so that way I can read them. Big fat floppy paperbacks. I'm excited. And again, I have another friend that wants to read these too. Weep. All right, so there is four more books in here, five more books in here. The first one is The Queen of Innes Lear. I'm not sure what this was about. I like the cover. I've heard some things about it. I'm wonderful at this, aren't I? And then I have The Dazzling Heights, which is the second book to the third, the hundredth floor, the thousandth floor. I don't know the, yes, the thousandth floor. <laughs> but these books are supposed to be like really pretty on the inside. Um, yeah, uh, I know that's futuristic. It's about 
people living in these towers and the higher you are the more you're rich and stuff okay yeah i'm good at this then the last couple books in here so i bought this a long time ago right after i realized that i had bought fire which is number two in the series so this is number three in the series and after i bought this i got a bunch of comments that said this book sucks so a little nervous about that but we'll see so this is the graceland realm this is number three i have number two i do not have number one like i said everybody kept telling me this book sucks but i didn't get that message until after i bought it okay and then we have the song rising it's the third one in the samantha shannon series i think there's four total they also have it's the bone season the mime order and the song rising and I have them all in paperback, but I have them in different cover styles. So this is one cover style and the other ones don't match, which sucks, but what can you do? And the last thing I got is The Beast is an Animal. <laughs> I bought this because Chelsea Palmer, um, who's like one of my favorite booktubers, uh, has bought this, read this, said it was great. I was curious, so I bought it too. I know, I'm such a follower. All right book box number two this is another small one um i think this is my newer one because i think that was the older one you know i really don't know i really don't know because it takes a couple months for these to get here so basically i have no idea what i bought anymore and then of course by the time they get here i can't remember why i bought them it's too slow Oh yeah, okay. I have a Ray Carson book. This is Into the Bright Unknown. This is the third book in a trilogy. I have the first two books. And no, I have not read them yet. Because I'm amazing. Again, I have The Fate of the Tearling because I wanted the entire series. The Queen of the Tearling and the other one, they're down over on this bookshelf right here, this little black one. This is the last one. It popped up in paperback. That's how I have the other ones. Okay. Okay, this one sounded really cool. This is Dreamland Burning, and um, it's something to do with a split time, like a now and like an 1800s. Like something happened. Somebody won't stay buried. Some stories need to be told. Um, so the 17 year old Rowan Chase finds a skeleton in her family's property. She has no idea uh, that investigating the burial centuries old murder will lead to a summer of painful discoveries about the past, the present and herself. I remember hearing about this. I think Haley and Bookland talked about it. I think she actually unhauled this book because she never read it, but psh, I don't care. I thought it was like, oh, that sounds cool. It's like my buzzwords. All right. I also have a thing for Casey West. Her books are so much fun. They are so cute. There's no box there for me to lean on anymore. Um, they're so cute and I wanted more of them. So every time one pops up that I don't have, I, I just buy it because I like Casey West. Susan Dennard. Um, a while ago, I, this is her original trilogy. And a while ago I found books one and three in this cover on Book Outlet. They had this book in a different cover, but I didn't like the other cover. So I wanted this cover for it, and when this one popped, I was gonna buy it from, um, oh look, Sarah J Mass blurbed it. Okay, anyways, um, I was gonna buy this from Barnes Noble when I got started the series, but I saw it pop up on Book Outlet, so I figured I would just wait to start reading it and buy it there, that way I have the whole trilogy for super cheap because this was her first, I heard it didn't go well. Does it mean I won't like it because it's kind of steampunky and I like that kind of thing, so. We should be good. I just wasn't sure much about it. All right, last couple books. In this box, I have Love and Gelato. Now I have Love and Luck. Um, I heard this one's not as good, but I heard it's still really cute. It takes place in Ireland, and I liked Ireland a lot. It was definitely a fun place for me to go visit. So I got this one too. And then I got Wolf by Wolf. This is a... Um, History reimagined, so this is what happens if Hitler had won the war and um, they have like this special race 
where if you win the race, you can meet Hitler. And so this girl decides that she wants to try for it. She wants to win the race and she wants to kill Hitler. It does have a second one, Blood for Blood, that I had no interest in getting right away. I wanted to read this one first, but I succumbed to the book outlet when it popped up. So that one will be in a future haul because I have so much shame for my book buying habits. There's only one actual package still floating around the ether and it hasn't even hit California yet. So it won't be here for a month. And there's still more stuff in my cart because I have problems. Last but not least, I saw this and it's got candy on the front of it. Oh, you can see that right there. That's lovely. Um, it's blue and it looks like gum and it's sticky. Yay. <laughs> Um, so she wrote, he wrote, I don't know. They wrote the, the orange, the orange. Wow. There's a manga called orange that everyone's been like talking about. Book outlet had all six of these ones, which are the, her, their original, a different series, not orange, if that makes sense. Um, and then they also had the second volume of Orange, but I didn't want, but I was curious about Orange, but didn't want to get the second volume before I read the first one. So I figured I would just grab number one and see if I liked it because the other ones have been on there forever. So I might just read this real quick. And if I like it, great. And if I don't, it's just one of them and it was cheap. So, all right, that was just devastating. Let me put my book on the floor with the rest of the pile. Right. Now the big box, which I warn you, is full of Alice in Wonderlands and uh, cookbooks. Because I've been trying to do this cookbook series on here where I test cookbooks out. And I need more cookbooks to try out. Um, I'm on the second cookbook right now, but I'm not overly enthused about this one. I, just, I don't know, like sometimes you look through a cookbook, you get all these great ideas and everything sounds wonderful and the pictures are beautiful. Well, the cookbook that we picked out to do next is just, nothing sounds all that amazing. So we're gonna do it this next weekend, but right now I'm not super excited about it. I have no idea what you'll see first, that or this, but either way. <laughs> oh, hello, my beautiful. One of these is a scratch and dent. One of these is a scratch and dent. And we will get there when we get there. All right, so what a mess. Ooh. All right, hold on. Alice, Alice, cookbook, Alice, Alice, cookbook. Neither and cookbook. All right, that box was awkward. All right, so let's do the neither and cookbooks first and I'll show you all my Alice's. Okay, so my neither is scary stories to tell in the dark. I bought this in October and it's now December. So that tells you how long it takes to get here. Um, but I saw this and I was like, oh my goodness gracious, it is all of them. And these stories freaked me out as a child and my kids have been asking about wanting to read them because I still had some of them somewhere, but this is the whole collection, I think. The complete three book collection. So yes, this is all of them. So I bought them for, my, for me to uh, show my kids because they deserve to know what kind of life I had as a child. All right, my cookbooks. Um, if you didn't know, I am vegan. Uh, my children are mixed. I have one vegetarian. I have one that's vegan most of the time. She should be vegan all the time because dairy and her do not get along, but she splurges once in a while. Like when they have a pizza party at school, she has a piece of pizza. And then I have one who does only eats fish. My husband only eats fish and he's cutting out dairy and trying to go more towards vegan but he's also got celiac disease and has to be gluten-free. So we make concessions somewhere. All right, so the first one is Eat Smart by Naomi Smart. Oh, huh, play on words, didn't even realize that. Okay, um, she has a YouTube channel. She is from the UK, I think, 
and she's really super cute and I watched her cook quite a bit and everything sounded delicious and this was on book outlet so I was like score um, one of my favorite cookbooks that I've ever dove into recently um, I'm gonna do a full review on that one too I'm gonna cook a bunch of new stuff out of it but I haven't gotten that far yet is by this woman it's um it's a holy crap I don't know how to say that name um, but this is her second cookbook it is a holiday cookbook so you have all sorts of like holiday stuff in here this thing is monstrous I don't think I've ever seen a cookbook this big before but yeah it's like over 400 pages but this is something I'm really excited about because um, I love having like holiday food and I thought this would be a lot of fun the last one I have is oh she glows and this one is another one that I've been looking at for quite a while one of my friends has one of her cookbooks I don't remember which one's which there's a couple of oh she glows there's like rebooted and original and I don't know um, but my friend has one of them and I think it's the other one I think I have one and she has one but I thought it'd be fun to try out. Um, I've heard great things about this particular cook. My friend likes her books a lot. So I figured we'd give it a shot. See how good it is. And it'll give us something, a new cookbook for our cookbook series. This is my favorite part. This is the Alice in Wonderland part. Oh, I don't even know where to start. Let's go at the bottom. All right, so I don't know which one of these is a scratch and dent. They all look fine to me. So the first one we have is Alice in Wonderland. It is the Topsy Turvy. So this is the front of it. And then when you open it up and look inside, it's kind of like um, a board book, but the, um, oh, it's got little pockets, like little, oh, look, it's little things to open. I am such a child. But I thought this was really pretty. It looks really cool and the artwork is interesting. And for me, it's all about the artwork. I am completely fascinated with all of the different styles of artwork that come in these Alice in Wonderland books. So this one is a very uh, much a little kid version, which I am good with. The second one is, got a big old sticker on the front of it. And this is the second one I got. Um, this one says it comes with three gigantic fold-outs. But again, I got it so we'd have a different art style. Um, I'm not really interested in getting ones that are, have all the same art style. I'm more interested in getting different ones. The only exception to that is, of course, if it is the original one. But, I mean, these are beautiful. Can you see it? Yeah? Okay. But these are beautiful, stunning pictures, and I just... I like them so much. All right, so that's number two. Number three is a little one. Um, this one is Alice's Adventures Underground. And it is a tiny little one. It's got like kind of deckled edges, but they're not deckled. They're like, I don't know how to describe them. They're like wavy edges. My cat goes, oh, the paper's out. Um, this one's supposed to be a little bit different. It's like supposed to be like a retelling. Uh, it says, when Lewis Carroll first entertained his colleague's daughter with the fantastical tale of the adventurer's little girl named Alice who falls down the rabbit hole, he had no idea that his improvised story would soon evolve and become the ultimate children's classic. Putting pen to paper at the request of his heroine's namesake, the lovely, and lovely, he lovingly transcribed and illustrated an early draft of the narrative that would eventually be published, The Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Long overshadowed by its best-selling derivative and rarely available in print, Ali uh, Lewis Carroll's original text of Alice's Adventures Underground is now available in an elegant collector's edition. So, so this is what this is, is then. I couldn't remember exactly. I know there was a story behind it, but I couldn't remember what it was. So this one's going to be fun to read. And last, but oh, certainly not least. Oh, this thing is so beautiful. Check out this one. Look at the edges. It's still in plastic. And this is, um, I want to say this is like a, let's dive in and find out. I have a book that's like a annotated version. I think that's what this is too. Hold on. Very carefully cut this off because I don't want to hurt the book. 
I'm curious. This is the scratch and dent one, which I don't see anything wrong with it. But this monstrosity is $17. And I want to say that if you bought it new at the store, it's like over 50. Ooh. It's a little back cover to it. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my goodness gracious. So this one's not annotated, I thought it was. But it's got beautiful, this is the original pictures. And I wanna say there's more than just, it's a complete Alice. So let's see. So we have the preface. We have Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. We have Christmas greetings. We have to all child readers of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which is 1871. We have the author preface for Through the Looking Glass. We have the Through the Looking Glass. We have the Wasp and the Wig, the Easter greetings to every child who loves Alice, the story of Alice, and then publisher's notes. So this is just like a big, huge collection. And I think it is beautiful. And I'm really looking forward to reading all this. And there's all sorts of stuff in the back of the story of Alice, which is pretty cool. So yeah, that's it. That is my enormous book haul. And I have problems, but I'm happy to have these problems. So I will talk to you guys soon. Um, yeah, talk to you guys soon. I'm overwhelmed. I'm so excited to have my Alice's. Oh, I need to read them all now. All right, bye. Hi guys. I just wanted to add this little bit at the very end of my unboxing. This is now. I edited everything yesterday and thought, oh, I need to add something in. So this is like, Burnt faced, I'll create unboxing, now me. Um, believe it or not, I've only gotten one new box from Alcrate. Uh, Al I've only gotten one new box from Book Outlet and since this uh, was filmed a month ago, but I did some damage on Cyber Monday and Black Friday, and they won't be here for a month, so yeah. I'll do my next unboxing then. But the reason I'm on here is because of the giveaway. I asked you guys in the unhaul if you'd be interested in a giveaway and everybody said yes. So I'm going to set the giveaway up to start today. Um, it'll probably start like a couple hours before this goes up and it will last one week. So after the week is up, I will go on to Rafflecopter and I will find out who won automatically and I will email you. And depending on where you live, Kind of depends on how many books I can send. If you live in the States, I can send you far more. If you live um, internationally, I'm still happy to send you books. Um, I just can't send quite as many because books to the States, because I'm in a territory, I do have the normal post office, I can send books by media mail. They take a month, but I can send them by media mail. Um, if you're outside the United States, it also takes a month and it costs more. So we will definitely um, have you pick whatever books you wanted out of my stack and I will send them to you. Um, like I said, please be patient. Uh, after the, I will get a hold of you probably the day after the um, giveaway is over, but in, no matter where you are, unless you live on island or in one of the Mar other Marianas Islands, it's gonna take a while to get to you. So I'm gonna apologize in advance, but I'm excited to do the giveaway and I hope you guys had to have fun with it too. So if you need any um, refreshers on what I'm giving away, just go to the unhaul because it's all there. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.